Today we're going to do some multiple choice math. This math question is based on a question that appeared on the Power Prep, which is the computerized adaptive software that's available from GRE on its official website at gre.org or ets.org. You can download it as long as you have a PC. And when you sign up for the test, they'll send you a CD that you can also download as long as you have a PC. It's not available on Macs. The numbers are the same. The story's a little different. The first thing we have to recognize is we have five answers. 11, 40, 1,200, 1,440, 1,540, 15, 40, and 1,600. Do you have your answer yet? On two consecutive classes in San Francisco and Berkeley, I saw one of our students walk in, different one. Find the answer just by looking at the answer grid. Now let's look at the problem. We have a large commercial GRE course that's so popular and it doesn't have any limit on the class size that they just had to put a lot of people in the room. They ended up with 20 rows of students. The first row had 20 chairs. Now for testing for the public, this would have been the whole course because we limit it to 20 people and we make sure everybody sits in the front row. But they had lots more people. Each of the next rows had six more than the previous row. How many chairs are in the room? Well, I noticed that there was something about six going on in this problem. And I noticed we had a lot of 40s. And my students noticed that too. And then they noticed that they had several answers that were pretty close to each other. And they said, Dave, I'll use central tendency and I'll pick the middle one. And I realized that there were six and they had a lot of 40s. And all of a sudden I realized that these answers were 60 part. And those are answers that reflect the structure of the problem. And the relationships between answers that reflect the structure of the problem. And then we had this little stranger that wasn't part of a rainbow. It was disguising the right answer. But then you're going to say, Dave, what's the real way to do this problem? And there is a real way. You've got 20 chairs in that first row. And then you've got all these other rows. And each one of those rows has to have at least 20 chairs in it. So you have to have at least 400 chairs. And then you start to realize that that's 400 more than another answer, and that's 400 more than another answer, and all of a sudden this is a relationship that reflects the structure of the problem as well, and there's a little stranger that's not part of a rainbow that's disguising the right answer again, isn't it? But then you got all those other things, don't you? And you say, how are we going to figure this out? There must be a formula, and there is. you're going to create a triangle. And a triangle has a formula of base times height divided by 2. And this is going to have one set of six chairs, and this one's going to have 19 sets of six chairs. So that means that the middle row is going to have 10 sets of six chairs. So this triangle is just like a rectangle. It's just like 19 rows of 60 chairs, which is going to give you 1140. Oh good, we got our answer, don't we? 
Oh, 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 we forgot to add that 400, didn't we? That's why we draw the rainbows first, so we don't make that predictable mistake that's built into the answer grid, so that we find that we can pick it. We add 400 and 1540. 1200 and 1600 is if you think you've got 20 chair rows with those chairs of six in them. Multiple choice math is a lot different than fill in the blank math. We can use the answer grid to find the problem. We can use relationships between answers to reflect the structure of the problem. We can use those relationships to avoid the little mistake that's built into the problem. And then we can use the problem to check our work, knowing full well that they're going to give us easy numbers. Testing for the public. Nobody makes things easier.